Hello, and congratulations on your admission to Columbia University's MSRED program. If you love real estate uh, and you like to look at buildings and think about properties and uh, like the notion of buying and selling and developing exciting buildings, then this program will provide you with the opportunity to put skills behind that and uh, develop into a professional whereby you can realize that enthusiasm uh, in your career. Uh, we have a very exciting, intensive program. Admittedly, it is three consecutive semesters, full-time, intensive coursework, plus projects, plus site visits, study trips abroad, and so on. But it is uh, an exciting and intensive time. We approach the, pro uh, the, approach the program with a, a fundamental construct of combining the, uh, an interest in the physical nature of real estate development and how buildings occur in the urban environment, what they're built from, how they're formed, what they look like, and so on with a very solid and rigorous financial analysis of what it takes in terms of capital and financing to make those buildings happen. Uh, this comes from uh, my background as well. Uh, I studied architecture and civil engineering uh, with my PhD from University of California, Berkeley, uh, and then combined that with a uh, Harvard MBA to put together those skills uh, regarding the physical entity and its financial support. Uh, so therefore, our program proceeds uh, with this, uh, within this construct uh, for the three semesters, where you start by working on some of the fundamental technical skills that you will need, uh, some of the analytical skills, how to go about rigorously understanding uh, markets and, and the, sorry, the real estate markets and the capital markets. Uh, and then you start to, then you proceed with, armed with that knowledge to learn to be more critical, to do critical analyses of what's happening and what's possible. From this emerges your ability to be creative so that by the end of the program, you are proposing your own capstone project, which is your proposal of a, of a deal, of a real estate development project uh, whereby you are proposing an, an exciting project, uh, you're talking about the physical construction, uh, its intended market, where it sits in a neighborhood, and you're also talking about or justifying how it can be financially uh, feasible uh, for investors and also for lenders. That is uh, the way in which your project, your, the, sorry, the program builds towards your project and uh, I think it's a, it's a sort of an exciting pulling together of a variety of skills. Also, upon graduation, uh, we're very interested in, in there being a wide variety of jobs uh, available for you or, or areas where you might like to go because real estate is a very complex uh, and, and widely diversified uh, industry full of activities ranging from design and urban planning through to the financing and detailed sophisticated financial structures in the capital markets. And the idea of the program is to develop within all students a capability across the wide uh, spectrum of, uh, of the industry, but then also allowing you in the second semester and third semester to gain some specific knowledge about uh, the area of the industry that you think you're particularly focused on. So there is a com there's a combined breadth of, of learning, uh, or, but also the opportunity to focus upon your particular interest within the sector. And in case it sounds like a whole lot of work and, and not too much else, believe me, uh, it's a wonderful cohort of, of students. You get to know each other uh, throughout the year, there, there are lots of things you share in addition to the classrooms and the projects and the work, uh, lots of events, uh, site tours, uh, study trips, and uh, you know a fair bit of partying, most of which I don't know about. But. <laughs> so uh, you'll have a good time and, uh, and I know that you'll make uh, professional and personal bonds with your classmates uh, that will last you hopefully a lifetime. 
Uh, now, of course, we have a couple of great students here who are going to uh, provide some insight into how they're experiencing it. So I'll ask Meredith to please say a few words. Thank sure thing. So I went to Emory University undergraduate. I graduated in 2014 with a BBA in finance, marketing, and real estate. Immediately after that, I moved to New York City to begin my career at Prudential, where I did loan originations for all different capital markets, all different property types, and all different investors. I found myself wanting to move from the debt side to the equity side, so I came to this program to facilitate the transition. Um, I've had a great experience so far here, and I believe that the strength of the program really speaks to the fact that right now I'm interning at SL Green to flex that equity muscle a little bit, and I feel very ready on the day one going in. Very good. Sounds and good. then Fabian. Too. Yes, uh, so a little bit about myself. I'm originally from Colombia. Eventually I made it to the United States, um, <clears throat> and I did my undergraduate at the University of Notre Dame in uh, South Bend, Indiana, um, where I got my Bachelor's of Architecture. So um, for the past, uh, prior to this program, I worked in New York City at a design firm in Chelsea for the past five years. And it was a, the point where I wanted to um, do a little bit more with my career and that kind of solidified it into um, uh, go, going into a program like this where I could become a well-rounded professional and individual as I pursue a career in development. Great. So uh, a good variety of students uh, with capabilities and, and backgrounds and truly visiting from all parts of the world. Uh, so that's very exciting. So let's talk about a few of the, uh, you know, the logistical things and details of the program. Uh, each year, approximately 135 students uh, enter into the program and uh, we're pretty good at, at uh, if you work hard, you do complete and graduate. Uh, so we don't have much loss along the way. Uh, we also are very keen to have some of our uh, students who are doing their Masters of Architecture and the Masters of Urban Planning, even the Masters of Historic Preservation, uh, do a dual degree with uh, the real estate. So they develop capabilities in both and, and graduate with both degrees. So that's very exciting um, to have as a combination. Uh, People uh, are interested in the variety of courses and subject matter that, that you'll be able to undertake. As I said, are very important to develop core competencies across all of the major areas uh, that real estate covers. That is everything from planning and understanding the physical environment and, and zoning restrictions through finance, understanding all the uh, way in which money is involved in making these projects happen or investing in them, construction, understanding exactly how buildings are made and built, uh, legal aspects, that is, you know, how the contracts and how, how all of the um, transaction occurs, transaction occurs, uh, and then of course various important things such as uh, s environmental sustainability, uh, community engagement, um, and, and a lot of the other issues. Another thing that we, we are including more and more in our program now is the application of technology, the understanding, the use, the competency with technology. Real estate has been a late adopter of uh, technology in general. However, there are a lot of exciting advances and we have a very good partnership with key people in the industry that come in and talk about, uh, work with our students and, and have students learn about potential applications. Additionally, we're going to be starting some fundamental courses in, uh, in, in the capability of uh, computer programming and so on with some coding in Python and database management and so on so that you know how these things are actually approached. So technology is becoming an, an additional part of our program. Uh, with respect to uh, choosing uh, different courses and uh, your own particular enthusiasm, uh, the first semester doesn't allow too much capacity for that because there's a lot to get across, but by the second semester, then you're starting to see opportunities to look into uh, various things, such as affordable housing, um, perhaps uh, more detailed financial structuring, CMBS, REITs, and so on. Uh, so the second semester is definitely probably has about 50% flexibility to be choosing your own specific courses. 
the way in which uh, you, you select and are approved varies depending upon the courses. Sometimes we have size restrictions on the courses uh, just because of venues or the professors and so on. Uh, so it's going to vary. However, being competent for the courses, for the courses you choose, is a very important thing, and that is taken into account. So therefore, you, if you're going to go into the sophisticated financial structuring, along the way you have to demonstrate you know, a really satisfactory ability to do that, similarly with design and development. Uh, so that's the important way, uh, uh, that's an important part of, of choosing your, uh, your focus. In the final semester, it becomes even more of an opportunity because in that semester you can add an internship. Uh, this internship could be specifically in your area of interest. So that becomes part of your coursework and enables you to focus on that. Um, I'd like Meredith to speak a little about her internship. She's currently uh, working in, in the spring semester on a part-time internship with a company called SL Green, which is a major New York City office REIT. Uh, the uh, chairman and president of which is an alumnus of our program, Mark Holliday, and uh, he's a very esteemed industry uh, person, and uh, the company is top notch. And so we're always very thrilled to have one of our students, our current students, do an internship there. And this year, Meredith is doing that. And how are you finding it? I'm really enjoying it. So as I mentioned before, I really want to go from the debt side to the equity side. And on the very first day, they have me digging into deals that they're underwriting live. And they're also teaching me how to follow their old models to make sure that I fully understand what they're doing. Um, I think that it's very different from my role at Prudential, where everything was going through processes, whereas now I'm being encouraged to just think about things rather than fully relying on a model. And the academia that Patrice alluded to with especially our finance courses has given me the confidence to do so. So I think both personally and professionally, it's been a great experience. It's been a lot of work and it's been a real test to my time management skills, but I feel very confident that I'm gonna execute it all with, with ease. Very good. And Fabian, you, what have, you've developed your specific interests in the program. Um, that's right. Well, uh, coming from a design background, I feel like <clears throat> um, I feel like I needed to play a little bit of catch up uh, with everybody with a financial background. And um, so, so throughout this course, um, what I wanted to do was to maximize my, my time in the, in the courses that I took here. So that ma means maximizing the, the amount of credits to be able to pursue all the, all, all the financial courses that I was uh, faltering on from the beginning to be able to uh, get to a point where I feel like I am not only caught up with uh, my fellow peers, but I bring out a little bit forth um, through my design background and and my ideas that I that I have um, that I have uh, a, a advanced throughout this uh, course so far. He most certainly has, and you know it's very important that people with these different capabilities come together because that is the nature of real estate. Real estate is a place where you've got finance interests and design interests and so on all coming together. You are probably never going to be a person who is across everything, um, but you know, the important thing here is to realize what you're good at, what your enthusiasm is, uh, and then how to relate to all those other people with those complementary skills while you're here. Uh, so that's a very important thing. Um, we, you know, with respect to where you work, uh, we have, uh, as I say, the spring internships, and then you go on to uh, get a full-time job, hopefully upon graduation, uh, we have a dedicated a career advisor and associate director of our program, uh, Rebecca Polameda, and she works with you from day one uh, in terms of uh, developing your professional uh, self uh, to uh, present, best present yourself for, for your jobs and for your career in, in the future. So uh, what we do is uh, we start with uh, working your skills uh, of presentation, your skills of uh, your resume and so on, we bring in a lot of people from industry so that you start to see the, uh, to talk, so you start to see the nuances uh, or the differences between what activities occur in the industry and which ones might be most suited to you. Uh, then we work with you on, on that and uh, what we will find is that sometimes you'll be drawn to either a big scale operation, you'll be interested in working with a big company or even a small company. Uh, you may even return to a family company. Uh, and that's, you know, all of those things are possible and, and of interest. 
Uh, we fortunately have a very good reputation with the industry for our graduates and their skills, and so we have a lot of people interested in hiring our students and coming to talk about them during the program. We also have a specific career fair held in the spring where a lot of companies come and, and are represented and have specific jobs to fill and talk to the students uh, about those uh, opportunities. Um, some of the companies that we, uh, we, our students have gone to work at uh, include, in addition to SL Green, a very big REIT, uh, Avalon Bay is another big uh, uh, REIT, that is a residential REIT. Uh, Boston Properties is another big uh, commercial office building. Uh, we have some developers, some major developers, such as the CIM Group. They developed 432 Park and other significant properties uh, across the country and are now even working into South Amer Central and South America. We have uh, a big international engineering development firm, ACON, that, we, uh, that our students have gone to. Uh, big developer, Heinz. Uh, Gemdale, a lot of, uh, we now quite have uh, a few Chinese development companies that are doing work both in China and in the US that hire our students. Uh, we have some design developers. We have uh, some people, some firms, there are small firms who are both architects and developers. And of course, this is a natural uh, evolution of, of the people in our program, some of whom, like Fabian, come in as architects but then learn the financial skills so they can also act as developers. So the firms that are out there that function that way, particularly like our students, because they will have people like Fabian, you know, specifically developed for that activity. So we have uh, Tamarkin, uh, the uh, L&M group, and so on. Additionally, we also like uh, to continue involvement with government authorities and, and so on. These are major decision makers with respect to real estate development. So we find that uh, people like the Economic Development Corporation, sometimes city planning, uh, various municipal governments, uh, some sovereign funds and so on, are interested in, in having our students uh, join their companies to or join their operations. So quite a wide variety of, of potential jobs. Um, I I'll just ask um, Fabian if he had now any idea, you know, any sort of specific ideas about the activity that he, he might like to work on uh, upon graduation. Well, um, as, as Patrice may have alluded to, uh, you learn a lot of uh, things throughout this program and you become uh, a person with many hats. And um, having my, uh, my background not only in design but in construction, I uh, have always thought, and after this program, I think I've solidified my idea as a developer, uh, so, so, um, which means going to um, some sort of a project management capacity at um, development firms within the New York market. Exactly, and uh, Meredith told you a little bit about you know where she where she's going. Um, what I'd like to just sort of touch on now is a little bit about you know the logistics of how it actually feels to be in the classroom and, and in the program. It is a full time program only. It, it's you know pretty much impossible. You have classes during the day. You have projects. It is very uh, very demanding. Uh, we have two uh, major full time professors. Uh, myself and a Professor Kate Asher. Uh, she works. Uh, she works in the real estate industry on the development analysis. Um, additionally, because we're in New York, we are so lucky to be in New York with with quick access to the best of professionals working at the coalface in the various aspects. So we have the best of the tax, real estate taxation accountants come in to give a talk. We have the head of real estate finance from a major bank come in and give, a cl give classes on, uh, on real estate debt. We have a, you know, a senior person from one of the big international asset management companies come and teach about uh, that uh, aspect of real estate. So we are very, very fortunate to be able to have a substantial number, we really have somewhere between 40 and 50 adjunct professors who come in to give courses specifically relating to the activities that they're doing daily. So you're going to be hearing and learning about what's actually happening right on the job uh, at this time, and that's very exciting. 
Uh, as I say, additionally, we've got full-time professors who are you know, around more, and uh, such as myself, and I meet with students regularly and uh, also get to know you individually over the time. So, so that's very helpful. Um, we, there, there is not a part-time part -time option, so you know, other programs have that, but we do not have that. Uh, people are concerned about coming in with the, you know, with uh, respect to uh, work experience, whether or not you have ex prior experience in real estate. Uh, the approach is that uh, we are going to accept, you know, brilliant, interested students, uh, even without prior real estate experience. Uh, the program is is structured to provide you with uh, the, the opportunity to learn the skills and learn the pieces and pull them together. Uh, however, that being said, real estate as an industry is uh, not very fully understood. So if you haven't had some experience in it, even if it's been an internship, uh, an understanding who does what and what it's all about, that can you know set you back a little. But you know don't don't let it uh, defer. You know, don't let it put you off from coming because we'll we'll get on top of it. However, you know two years, one or two years work experience, really seeing what's out there, knowing what you like about what you've been doing, what you want to do in the future. Just as Meredith suggested, she she really understands the debt side of real estate. Now she knows she wants to be on the investment side. So understanding what, is, what it's like out there and so on really does help you uh, choose the right sort of courses, come in knowing what, or having an idea about what you think you need to learn uh, and so on. So uh, the suggestion is that some work experience does help a lot. Uh, however, it is, it is not an absolute requirement. If you don't have any, I suggest you do read some of the little simple books, you know, Real Estate 101, uh, you know, read The Art of the Deal uh, by our president, uh, you know, just read about the industry and how people behave and act and so on uh, prior to coming in. We will help you with the technical skills, but to have some insight into, you know, how the industry is, uh, is, is hopefully of interest to you too. Um, I've, Probably, uh, Fabian, how about you? Before you came to the program, you, you had your architectural skills, but did you feel you, you were sort of okay jumping in on the finance and so on? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, coming from, yeah, from construction, um, not only, I mean, as Patrice was saying, was saying uh, you, you look into real estate uh, literature, but also you need to get into uh, the hang of uh, reading the periodicals and what's happening the day to day, the advantage of being in New York City is that you get to see everything popping up pretty much in every corner. So uh, you're pretty much involved in the real estate uh, development, whether you want it or not, um, at, at every kind of level. Um, so, so, I'm sorry, so uh, I, I feel like um, coming into this program, I didn't feel like I was completely in tune with the financial side. It was still like a very foreign concept for me. I knew that back in college, I took a couple of uh, introductory finance and, and accounting uh, courses. However, it, was, it would never be as focused on construction, development. And, and, and while um, it was a challenge at the beginning, especially Excel modeling and all these things, I feel that after the summer semester, um, myself and many of my peers were caught up to to some level yep. where where I could feel comfortable or kind of gauge where I'm at in comparison to other that I could uh, have discussions and understand very well what's happening from the professionals that are coming to talk to us and you know that's right yeah Meredith and I'll add to that having had a really strong finance background for lack of a better word I came in a little cocky thinking that the finance classes were going to be super super easy for me I had an undergraduate degree in finance I took a ton of accounting courses and then I went on and I did finance for four years at Prudential but I learned a ton and it was challenged to really understand the metrics and not just regurgitate them from a model that's right and you know I'm pleased Meredith said that because you know, we are not just here to teach you modeling or it's not a trade school and so on. Real estate is a very critical activity or real estate development. It impacts communities and, and uh, 
uh, and cities nationwide, and you're the instigator of this activity. So therefore, you know, to be a critical thinker, to come in and understand what the, what's behind the numbers, what are they saying, what are the messages, and so on, not just be, um, you know, good financial modelers and so on. And I think, you know, that's what Fabian alludes to too, as he, you know, by the end of the first semester, his, his technical skills were absolutely adequate, but uh, what was most, most important was that he really understood what was happening behind the numbers and so on. So we think that's very important. Would you like to add some other uh, notions about campus life, Meredith? Oh, absolutely. So we work really hard, but we also have a lot of fun. Um, we have two great social chairs who are constantly putting on wonderful events for us, a lot of happy hours, a lot of um, trips that we've taken on our own. Fabian and I actually went on a trip to Columbia together. Columbia took Columbia. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're always just wanting to get to know each other. And um, Patrice talked about a lot of adjunct professors who come in to teach us. I love that because it feels like we never really left the industry because these people are speaking to us as though we're their colleagues. But also they have all, a lot of them have graduated from the program and they've all emphasized get to know your classmates because they're one of your biggest assets coming out of this program. And I really feel like if your class is anything like ours, you're gonna love each other so much and really come to depend on each other. Right, um, so I feel like, um, 130, 140 people that we have in this class. Um, it, it, it seems, uh, I, I don't know, to me it seemed like a lot from the beginning because I thought that, oh, how, how am I going to learn from so many people? But what happens is that everybody comes from such diverse backgrounds that you you have these sources, these resources actually, uh, that you're able to always be, you're never bored pretty much. Um, in addition to it, there's a lot of opportunities for clubs, uh, for whatever interest, whatever capacity you want, and, and pretty much this, this program gives you the opportunity to, to pursue whatever you want as long as you're willing to put the time for it. Um, so in addition to academic uh, clubs, uh, there's also intramural uh, clubs that we've, we've also tried to, try to do. There's the basketball team that I was kind of, Involved, but on the side, but and then there's uh, the soccer team, but and then you hear about people uh, on the weekend just uh, getting together, play racquetball, tennis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it becomes like a um, like a family, like a very close environment uh, where we haven't had any issues, um, and and it's been very socially and like and de developmentally good. Mm. I think you know the number of 130, 140 folks. It seems like a lot, but. In fact, you know, it's, it's quite good because you'll find different groups of people with different interests rather than just one sort of small cohort. And if you're not in uh, with it, then, you know, it doesn't work. So we, you know, we find different, you, you find your uh, own place and, and your own enthusiasms uh, shared by other classmates. So that's a, a lot of fun. Um, we are located in the architecture, graduate, the Graduate School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation. Uh, that is a, you know, a real estate is, as an industry and as a discipline and as an academic pursuit is still trying to find its place in terms of learning. Uh, but of course it comes out of a lot of planning of the physical environment. And this has been very appropriate for our program. Uh, so therefore we, as, you know, we do learn a lot about planning, understanding the buildings and so on, the architecture. But then, you know, the way our program is distinguishes itself from other programs in the, Arch in the School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation, School of a Built Environment, is that we know about the financial impacts. We know about the financial composition and the financial impacts of that. And that's a skill set that's, that's uh, important. Do I believe that that's a very, uh, a very important school skill set to be on top of uh, in terms of rigor and understanding? Absolutely, because if it's going to set you apart from architects and planners and so on, then you need to know it well. That's the first thing. The second thing is that while it's wonderful to talk about real estate development visions and so on, no one in, in, in the world in which we currently li live, no one is going to be able to make it happen unless you understand how it works financially. And this I learned myself through my own uh, evolution, through the evolution of my own career. And, um, and so therefore I, I see the finance strength and finance capability as an important tool that you have to realize your visions uh, in terms of physical development, urban development and so on. So the program is finance heavy. Uh, it, it, I, I 
abs absolutely declare that our students come out as strong in financial analysis as anyone uh, coming out of an MBA program, and I know that because I went to one myself, and, uh, but even better and more fully uh, knowledgeable about the nuances and uniqueness of real estate uh, w uh, versus other forms of finance. Uh, the other thing that people often ask about in terms of um, uh, the program is, um, uh, sorry, the, um, not just the career assistance, but also the potential for studying in other schools and across uh, other disciplines. Uh, it is possible. Uh, you have a fairly intensive uh, curriculum to uh, get across, so there's not that much latitude. Uh, if you're really uncertain uh, and still thinking about uh, including other disciplines or other programmatic interests in your education, then you know you may want to sort of work that through a bit because once you're here, it is pretty demanding. That said, you know people have taken a class or two in the business school when when the specific classes that they're interested in isn't on offer in our curriculum also within the policy school, and some even within engineering and computer science. So there is a little bit of an option, but it is certainly limited. Uh, but that means that you spend a lot of time uh, involved with us uh, fully in the, uh, in, in the, in the classes. Um, the classes range dramatically from whether they're in classroom study to on-site visits, to doing projects, to doing exams, and so on. So I'll just ask um, Meredith about you know particular classes that have had a format that she's found interesting uh, and particularly useful. Yes, yeah, so I took Kate Asher's History of New York class in the fall, and it basically gave an overview of the evolution of New York City and why it was developed in the way that it was. And I. It was my favorite class so far. No offense for all your classes, Patrice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy that it is. Yeah. Because it taught me how to appreciate value beyond a spreadsheet. So her format was really interesting. We had weekly lectures, but she also sent us on walking tours through the city, where she provided us with a handout explaining the history of that landmark, and then also going into the impact it had on the neighborhood, and then asking us to give a reflection on what we thought about it or how we would have gone about it differently. So that forced me not only to rethink New York, but now when I go to other cities, I think about why is that there? Why is it the way that it is? We actually just went to Israel um, as part of a study abroad trip, and it, I got to flex that muscle again, and I really, really appreciated it. Very good. Ready? Uh, so for myself, I'm currently taking a property technology class. Uh, like Patrice said, uh, that's that's where the industry is going, and it, it needs to kind of catch up to all the other technology um, formats that prevail in other industries. And um, currently, this this class, at least the format that that it, in its current form, is to um, it, it's more of a teaching how to become a, an entrepreneur. Uh, so what happens is that. Uh, from the beginning you form a group and you find a problem currently in the real estate, uh, in every uh, component of the uh, real estate industry, and you try to brainstorm a way to finally fix it and how you can create a technology, obviously based on what you already know, into creating something that could, that could actually work in the, to the future. So uh, my group uh, has created a very excited, exciting uh, uh, software program and I mean obviously we keep on pursuing and I think we'll become more and more excited but uh, uh, in this class we are receiving a lot of um, help from Zachary Ahrens our, our, our professor in addition to a lot of speakers that he brings from the industry itself and each of them are just very inspiring kind of motivating to uh, keep going and pursuing this even if it's uh, at a uh, on the side for now uh, that's very true, and uh, so you know, an exciting range of courses. Uh, I think uh, both uh, Meredith and Fabian have indicated that you know, they've really embraced courses that were beyond their original skill set, and uh, and that's really what the program offers. Uh, it it strengthens your existing skill set, but also uh, broadens the areas that you, that you might need. Um, we do, of course, have uh, quite a few students from uh, all around the world, and um, it, it can often be a, a decision about staying or going back to your home country upon completion of the program. 
Uh, the decision is often dependent upon the visas, uh, the visa uh, situation with, with respect to the federal government. That, unfortunately, we can't do anything about that. Uh, and uh, there is, um, of course, the HB1 visa is the typical visa that you're required to get in order to do some uh, uh, work or to work for a year upon completion of your degree. Now, so the question becomes, can you get a, a job upon completion uh, with this H-1B visa? And uh, what we do like to say is it's important for you, for an international student, to start their career education process earlier uh, because uh, every company can be open to sponsorship, but they need to know well in advance of time. We have plenty of international alumni from abroad who have been sponsored in, in jobs in uh, the US, uh, but they did start their career process and, and locating those jobs and uh, working with those companies very, very, very early in the process. Uh, we have other alumni, many other alumni, uh, that are offered spectacular jobs in their home countries um, and ultimately decided to return to those countries either immediately upon graduation or even after a year of, of some work experience in the US. Uh, I'm particularly finding in China now that uh, a lot of particularly our female graduates are getting ex exceptional opportunities in finance, in investment um, markets uh, and, and jobs and so on. And you know the, the accelerated uh, uh, ascent which they will have in their careers it cannot be matched uh, in terms of the US. So a wide variety of opportunities with respect to coming out of, of that. Um, would you like to say a little bit more about, um, you know, what you what you envision for the future and coming out of the program? Um, sure, sure, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so, so at least um, for myself, after well, Patrice said, there are so many opportunities abroad, and coming from those, this program, I feel like you're prepared to uh, practice pretty much anywhere. Um, New York being such a diverse and, and complicated. Um, city in itself that you feel like everywhere else, uh, if you feel like you're prepared everywhere else. So uh, last week I went to Brazil with, uh, well, it was, a, it was a, a group opportunity to go to Brazil and uh, talk to many of the firms, including Tisha Inspire, and uh, we, we spoke with, um, with the chief, <laughs> with the COO, uh, Gregory Vaca, and he uh, pretty much tells us a story where he worked in New York for a couple of years. Um, quickly after, they asked him if he wanted to go to Brazil to uh, to work uh, in the development opportunities uh, down there. And uh, honestly, he enjoyed it so much that he was very inspired, not only by the wide range of opportunities that are obviously different from New York City, but he decided he liked it so much that he decided to stay. And being able to talk to someone like that, someone that, a Columbia alum, uh, that also kind of energized me as well and, and got me very excited to, to think that maybe, you know, in the future, I would love to, obviously, since I'm making such a large pivot from design, I would love to, you know, gain some experience here before um, maybe pursuing something internationally uh, within a five-year timeline for myself. Very good, very good. And Meredith, any more things about you know living, uh, you know, managing your your living and activities during your program, getting housing and so on, things like that. So I was already living in New York, so I had it a little bit easier than some of my classmates who are coming from abroad and for coming from other cities here in the United States. But overall, I would recommend living near campus because I don't, and it's quite a trek in the morning. Um, and we do have early morning classes, and we do have late classes, so that flexibility is something I would definitely encourage you to seek. Um, but you know, we're on campus long days, but there is some freedom. You just have to manage your time really well. And I think that if you were um, smart enough and diligent enough and having a resume to get into this program, you know how to do that. Yeah, that's right. Um, absolutely. Yes. Uh, myself, I'm also. I actually live in Brooklyn, uh, 45 to an hour, minutes away from class. It was uh, by my own choice. <laughs> yeah, it's a little far away. Um, however, I wouldn't discourage uh, people from pursuing different or, or getting to know different neighborhoods in New York. New York is such a fantastic place that everywhere you go to has such a rich and diverse uh, history that everywhere you go is going to be fantastic. Uh, at the same time, yes, well, uh, 45 minutes to an hour is cumbersome, especially when there's late nights, projects, et cetera. Um, 
this program is worth it. And you know, if, if you get to have some form of, of, of divide, I think that I found it very, uh, very healthy, very healthy for myself to have, have that little gap. As, well, you, need, you want it to get away. Yeah, yeah a little okay. bit. <laughs> and other people just sort of live here. We can't move them on. But uh, uh, no, it's it's very exciting. It is very, as I say, very intense. We squeeze three semesters within a 12-month calendar year, uh, and that means you're you're pretty much in school most of the time. There is uh, about uh, three weeks, I believe, between the summer semester and the fall semester. About a month between December between the end of the fall semester and the beginning of the spring semester, uh, in, which, in which I encourage you to go out and do an internship for someone. Uh, great, great time to get some experience. Uh, and then only a week in the spring break, uh, and then you're graduating in May. So, you know, you're, you're pretty much um, located uh, in the classroom, on campus, and so on. So having easy, easy access and making your personal life uh, as convenient as you can is probably helpful to your uh, ability to get through the program well. Um, any other uh, things we'd like to say about uh, getting involved and joining? The clubs, Meredith, which club? Will you talk about the yeah. women in real estate club? That was very good one. So my two of my good friends now, Carly and Allie, founded the Women in Real Estate Club and they've had us meet with so many women executives throughout the city who are working at, you know, at the C-suite level, and it's really inspiring to see these women because, of course, this is a male-dominated industry, um, so that's been very rewarding. Also, learning under a woman has been really, really thrilling. Um, my friend Taylor and I founded the Hotel Club, in which we um, arrange tours of different hotels in the city, so we've d gone to the Arlo um, Nomad, we are going to the Hoxton next week, and I think that that's really um, something, it's a fun club because we get to stay there and we'll get you know a bite to eat after or something like that, so we've gotten to know each other outside the classroom a little bit, but also get to know a different asset class that we wouldn't otherwise. So there's definitely, if you want to found a club, there's the support from the program to do so. Absolutely. We, we encourage the clubs and we help you a little logistically and so on. And, you know, the Columbia University, being students at Columbia University carries a, a, good, uh, a, a good reputation and, uh, and a lot of people are very willing to help you. Uh, and Fabian, other uh, other activities that you were involved in? Uh, you know, start right. on so, the basketball. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, the basketball. Um, obviously, Patrice is a, is a big fan of yes. the basketball club mm -hmm. and she supports the team as much as she can. Um, and... Uh, Unfortunately, this year they weren't. Uh, the team wasn't as successful as in previous years. But it, it's just like a very good opportunity to bond on and off um, the classroom. Um, not only that, but you know, you build up a lot of friendships um, in addition to just uh, being healthy, athletic, etc. Um, I, I know I was also involved in the international uh, club where you know, not, it, it not only encompassed real estate, but it also encompassed uh, GSAP itself. Um, you get architects, uh, and then pretty much everybody that has so much, so much wealth of knowledge from from different countries. And we would sit down and discuss everything that's happened, how the processes are in different countries, and and how it relates to here in New York. Good. And so there you are. It's uh, we'd like to wrap up now. It's a it's a very exciting program, very demanding, but you know. We, when, you're, when you open your eyes and uh, realize you're in the thick of it, uh, it's pretty exciting and carries you along uh, with a lot of great learning, a lot of great friendships, a lot of real insight into the real estate industry, uh, and so on. The time goes by in a flash, right? Oh I, all I have to say is I'm so jealous of all of you because you have this to look forward to, and as excited as I am about my job prospects, you're going to have fun. <laughs> well, that's right. We're sad to see them go. It all, all goes by in a flash, but uh, you know, hopefully you, you come out being wonderful professionals, and that's our enthusiasm for you. So looking forward to you joining us in June, and uh, if you have any further questions and so on, please don't hesitate to be in touch. Thank you.